all, all my teachers are looking at this sermon title saying, what is Reverend Tom, where the real Christians at? But I want to tell you, I got this from a group of my youth. When I was at Union, they uh, they came up with a rap and it said, where the real Christians at? And uh, I coined that phrase from them instead of saying, where are the Christians? <laughs> I say so. Y'all bear with me. But uh, let us bow our heads for a moment. Most gracious and everlasting Father, it's once more and again that we come before you. Oh, Father, we thank you for all that you've done as we will part one from the other. Oh, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you for those that were going through, those that were dealing with sickness, those that were dealing in bereavement. Father, we ask that you lift all of us up, Father. Open our minds, open our hearts, that we may receive what you have for us today. And Father, we know that you're already in our midst. And so we're praising you ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, our uh, text, I'm following the lectionary scripture of the Methodist Church. And we're still in Ephesians from uh, Ephesians 4, uh, you know, dealing with Paul. And as I read that, that title came to me where <laughs> the real Christians are. You know, because we... We look at this world and there's a whole lot of things going on now. Every day is something different, yeah. you know, something like we've never experienced before. And, and, you know, you have to ask, you know, where are the Christians? You know, things are happening and we're doing things. I see things on television now that <laughs> Lord knows, I don't even think you could have gone to the movies to see. <laughs> <laughs> but they have a, uh, things that our kids are looking for. Television is raising our kids right before our eyes, and we're not paying attention to what they're doing. And so we ask the question, where the real Christians are? You know, when uh, Malin O'Hare took prayer out of our schools, <coughs> one, lady, one lady was able to take prayer out of the schools mm -hmm. and I have to ask the question where the real Christians at because had we been on our job that should have never happened mm -hmm. just like she had rights we have mm -hmm. rights too it amazes me that <laughs> you have Bibles in prison hello somebody and mm -hmm. uh, we can't have them in school if we turn that thing around and have Bibles in school, we might not need them in prison. So we, need to, we have to think about that. Well, as we look at Paul today, you know, Paul is, again, you know, talking to those in Ephesus. He, again, is uh, incarcerated. And uh, I think Paul did his best writings while he was incarcerated. But he starts off in that uh, particular scripture, and he says, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. I guess Paul was being locked up for being uh, a, a minister, preaching God's word. And he said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation. You see, we wear that title of Christians real easy. You know, we wear it, but do we really walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called? See, that, 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 Name Christians uh, put something on us that we 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 represent a royal priesthood, and so therefore we ought to walk worthy to the title that we carry. I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, you know, uh, my mother then would say, "Hey, now, okay, when you go out that door, remember you mm -hmm. represent this house, mm -hmm. and don't you go out there and embarrass us." And see, that's the way I feel like God is telling us. Now, y'all are supposed to be Christians. But how in the world are we letting all of these things go on and we just sit idly by? You know, Christians are backed up, backed up, backed up, backed up. Church, we're against the wall now. So it's time for us to start walking forward and growing out and being what the, we ought to be. You know, uh, uh, in that second verse, he said, with all the lowliness, and meekness with long suffering and forbearing one another in love. And it also had a deal in there that sent me over to uh, Acts, the 20th, 19th chapter that said, 
serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with sometimes it's going to bring some tears. You know, sometimes you're going to cry. Uh-huh. Say, sometimes you're going to go through some temptations. Yeah. He said, which befell him. But you still have to hold fast to who you are and to whose you are. So we have to keep working hard to be the, the type of Christian that God would love us to be. And then it also had uh, sent me over to uh, uh, Colossians, the third chapter, uh, 12 verse. It said, put on, therefore, the elect of God. You know, say, we represent God. We ought to have the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy. You know, hey, we, God has had mercy on us because, I mean, we've gone through some things. We've done some things that we're not proud of, but God in his infinite wisdom and his mercy, he blessed us anyhow. So we can get to a point now to, you know, we, we, we can serve, you know, sometimes we, 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 we didn't go we find Christ when we, we found him. Then we put him on the back burner. Then we had to go back and get him. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we ought to put on the uh, 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 kindness. You know, it doesn't cost to be kind. You know, you can just look out somebody and just say, good morning. You know, some people are going through some things and you don't know what you can say or how you can change their day by right. a smile or like, hello, brother. Hello, sister. How are you doing today? You know, uh, you know and, and you know, and then when you come back and you say, well, you know what? You blessed. And you know, y'all heard me tell a story about the young man at the store, you know, that came in and said he was having a bad day. And I said, sir, you're not having a bad day. He said, man, you don't know nothing about me. How you going to tell me I'm not having a bad day? And I said, well, for one thing, you walked under here under your own power. I say, you, you, you're still able to speak. I say, so whatever you're going through, God has given you a time to where whatever you're dealing with, you can change that. And just in talking with him, he said, sir, he said, I don't know. He said, but you know what? You are so right. And he left that with a different attitude. That's the way we ought to be as Christians. We ought to be able to change someone's attitude you know, by a smile, by a hug, by a handshake, but some way we ought to be be able to just bless them uh, uh, in a way that Christ will, you know, a holy hug, a holy kiss. You know, in these days and time now that we have all of this pandemic going around, you know, you things can't, you know, not like we used to do it. So, but we, we can find ways in order to go further and bless God, you know. And then he says, that we ought to, in the Colossians, you say we ought to be humble in the humbleness. You know, hey, if, if you go out and you do good to somebody, you don't have to go tell the world, hey, I did this for them, I did. Just go on. Just go on and be in, and, you know, just, just thank God that you were able to bless them. And he gave you the opportunity to go and, and be able to somebody and bless somebody. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. We ought to be meek about what we do. You know, that's why we say we are like we're like lambs, you know. We, so we ought to be able to uh, uh, just just trust God, you know. All throughout Jesus' life and all that He was going through and all that you read about in the Bible, you don't hear anything about Him jumping up. And even when people say, "Well," uh, they say, "Well, uh, uh, well, we hear you this." We, he said, "Well, who do you say I am?" You know, and we have to do with some long suffering. You know, sometimes uh, if you haven't gone through anything, then you don't know what it means to, to know that God is good and God can bring you through. But but we ought to be able to bear, you know, trust one everybody else and bear one another's faults, you know. And don't be so quick to jump out at somebody when, when, when something is going wrong. And we ought to be, you know, third person, endeavoring to keep the unity. We ought to be in unity. What would it be like if we were all on one accord, as it were in the Act Two Church, on one accord? What could we change? What? How could we influence the world if we were like that? He said, "Every I spoke a word." He said, "Everybody heard in their own language, you know, and they in their own feeling." So they were they were in the unity of the spirit, the bond of peace. And that bond of peace can't be anything but love, you know, love, love in spite of. You know, hey, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about that. You know, verse four says what? 
It's one body, one spirit. And even, uh, you know, because see, we like to look at that different, you know, we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But actually, that's one body, one spirit. And we all are in that. We're called in this one hope of the calling. We ought to be able to be who we are in Christ God. You know, trust him for you. You know, we won't just make God a spirit. You say the spirit. No, God, that was a person. We say God and God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. That Holy Spirit is just as uh, uh, as, as body as God in a person or God in, in Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So we ought to be able to embody that, carry it everywhere we go, knowing that whatever I go, I have God in me. I, I want to see, you know, I, 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 I thought about one deal and say, you know, if a mosquito bite me, hey, there ought to be <laughs> so much love in me that the mosquito leaves say nothing but the blood of Jesus. He ought to be able to go out there because that's what we ought to be about. Everything, all our being, everything about us ought to be to uplift and glorify God's name. Because what? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I hear folk tell me all the time, you know what? You mess with this folk not going to heaven. I said, well, why, brother? Why you say that? He said, because y'all, 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 where y'all baptized? Well, y'all baptize you. You're, you're supposed to submerge. I say, I say, but we 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 sprinkle. But what you have to understand, my brother, I say, the baptism is a outward symbol of an inward cleansing that takes place. I say it's not in in in, in what you do. He said, because I can hold you under that water until the bubbles stop flowing, and if you don't change your heart. It won't mean a thing. So it's not in just how we're baptized, but it's that we receive the baptism. Uh, one Lord, one faith. Because I want you to know now, when we get to heaven, uh, it's not going to be a Baptist section and a Methodist section and a holiness section. It's going to be just all of God's children worshiping together. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Oh, what a time that would be. One God, God the Father, God, Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all of us. And we got to understand, he's in all of us, no matter what church we go to. You know, it's not about denominations. Denominations is not going to get you in heaven. He said, God, uh, Jesus said, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father but through me. So, we know how to get there, but we let all of these different things turn us around and get us all confused. But I said, every one of us is given grace. Oh, some of us have gotten more grace than other folk. But to every one of us, he's given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He loves us in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done, in spite of this, in spite of he loves us. So, so, hey, just because I've been in I've been in church all the time doesn't make me any more important than someone that's never been in or just come in the first day. He gives grace all oh, gives us according to the measure that he see that we need. Wherefore he said, we when he ascended up on high, hey, he said he led captivity captive and gave gifts to all men. Every one of us have a gift. You know, I look at Calvary. I am so blessed to be there. There are so many gifts. I got so many people that can pray, so many people that can sing, so many people that can preach. You know, I say, Lord, no, the word is just flowing. You know, that one body and every one of us is important. From the back door to the pulpit, we're all important. God has, you know, if, if we can just work together, and make that one body and work together to spread God's word. You know, hey, I love to hear Sister David sing. Love to hear her preach. You know, I, I, I my brother that prayed today, love to hear him pray. Look at all of these. 
All these things come together, what? In order that we glorify and make God who he is. And show people that, hey, I serve a God. You know, so people want to know what, you know, there ought to be a reason. Why you go to that church? Man, man my spirit is there. Then it says that he ascended, but it is he that also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He went up and he came down because, you know, all of us went up there. All of us, hey, he descended down and brought us up with him. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above the heavens. That what? That he might feel all things. He didn't leave nothing uncovered. He covered the ups, the downs, the rounds, and the throughs. And so that way we can go to him now. In it, I, I don't need a priest to go and pray for me. I, I don't need someone else. I can go and pray for myself. I can go in my own holy cause. You know, I, I don't have to be, you know, the church, you carry that church with you everywhere you go. And everybody ought to see the church and the God in you. And he gave some of us, some are called apostles. Some are called prophets. Some are called evangelists. Some pastors and some teachers. But you know what? Scripture said we all call to be ministers. We ought to be out mm -hmm. spreading God. Teaching somebody, hey, that there's no other way. You know what? I got a letter in the mail the other day. I say, who is this sending me a letter telling me to read this and read that? And I got to, I looked at the address. Man, address seemed familiar. You know, since the pandemic, Jehovah's Witness can't knock on you. They don't knock on your door no more. Mm -hmm. They send you letters in the mail. Mm -hmm. I say, well, look at that. Even with that, they're still trying to spread the word. I have to give them that. They're still spreading the word. And if they can do that, we ought to be to spread the word. We ought to be to touch someone everywhere we see. And until they look at you and say, you know what? It's something different about them. It's something that, that just shows, hey, they must be a child of God. That's where we ought to be represented. Because we are representative of Christ everywhere we go. And we're doing it what? For the perfecting of the saints. All of these gifts that we have, hey, when when everybody bring a gift to the house, see, some of us, some of us can't sing, some of us can't preach, but some of us can do. Uh, you know, I, I look at Joe Nay with wish he handled this technology, don't know nothing about it. Thank God for Joe Nay. <laughs> but she has it up. That's her gift. Some uh finance. Handle the books. Some love to do the worship. And some of the warriors, the old prayer warriors, God just they can just pray. They can pray. And somehow you just feel that their prayers are going through. So we all have these gifts for one purpose. Perfection. Perfecting the saints. For what? For the work of the ministry. And this is what it says. What? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Not to tear down somebody. You know, see, we sometimes we as Christians, we get so tired and we want to beat people with the Bible. But we ought to be building them up, edifying them with the body of Christ. You know, instead of just, you know, brother, there's, there's a better way. It's a way to tell anybody something. And we just have to be, uh, know that we have to come through the word of God and let God use us to lead us and guide us in the way in which we ought to deal with people that are out there. You know, I came out of the store the, uh, the other day and I, uh, yesterday uh, by the drugstore and there was a lady just sitting down on a, on a, on a blanket and man, it was hot. It was hot. I, I, God, I don't know what she's been through. I don't know what she's done. I don't know, but you know, I had a few dollars in my pocket and I gave her a few. And uh don't know who she is, don't that what my wasn't supposed to know. God just says, do this. And I did it. And I don't know what she's gonna do with it. But guess what? It took it out of my uh heart and it put it in her heart as to what she used it for. But 
we ought to be about God's business. We ought to be able to spread the word, the word and the love of God everywhere we go. And we ought to keep doing it until what? Until we come in the unity of faith. When we all again, we sing that song when we all get to heaven. Get to heaven. Mm. Oh, what a time, what a time that will be. Mm -hmm. And see, we need to learn. We got to get in the unity of faith. But we are not going to be able to get there until we get in the unity of faith and start preaching it here on earth. The unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, again, a perfect man, sinless man, died for the sinful and unto the measure of the stature and we we could we keep pushing because we know at our best we're but filthy rags but we ought to keep pushing and keep pushing toward perfection so that we can get somewhere close to the stature of the fullness of christ we want to be like him you know i'm trying my best to be as much like Christ as I can. I'm going to fall short. But I thank God that I keep on stepping forward, just drawing a little bit closer, knowing that, Lord, uh, I, I know I might have done this, and I know well, God forgive me and keep on moving. When we say, God, forgive me, hmm, you know, we sang that song, Lord of a, another chance. Uh, you know, uh, some of them say a second chance, but some say, hey, I messed that up a long time ago. So we say, God, of another chance. That mm -hmm. what? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and cared about the winds of doctrine. You know, let me tell you something about it. They say the Bible is evolving. I was in seminary school and one of my professors said that. I say, well, Professor, what are you saying? Well, you know what I say. Well, no, I say the Bible is not evolving. People are changing because God's word is the same yesterday, today, and it'll be that way forevermore. And we just need to understand it more. But we start to take things and do it with the way we are. We say, well, you know. I, I, I don't think it meant that. And, and I think it meant this. And and, and we ought to include, uh, well, you know, my scriptures say don't add anything to it and don't take anything away. So if we're going to be grounded and rooted in the word, guess what? Hey, we got to study the word. You see, some of us think that we can get the word by osmosis. If we set the Bible on the table, it's just going to jump in our in our mind, but we have to open that Bible and, and read a little and study God and, and know him for him, for, for who he is and who and know whose you are and know that he's going to take your places and that everything that you thought was so hard, there's nothing new under the sun. It just keeps going over and over again. And you look at, mm, I, I didn't realize that. Mm, I didn't realize this. But God has already written everything out and he has it for us for our learning, you know, for our edification that we may draw a little bit closer to him. We don't need to follow every little wind of doctrine that comes by, you know, because we have a lot of people, some people that, you know, hey, I'm, you know, we've heard people say, well, I'm the second coming of Christ and I'm this and that. But hey, that's not what my scripture said. Men use the word and and try to do it with cunningness. Some people I can't look at, some ministers I can't look at on TV when they, oh, you know, you send me $50 and I'll send you this prayer call. And But you know what? You can pray for yourself. And God can bless whatever cost you have right there in your home. And you don't have to pay that for it. And whereby they only doing that to lie and deceive you that they may grow richer. And we need to understand who God is, 
and let him direct us as to where we ought to go. But we ought, ought to be, but speaking the truth, what? In love. When you go to your brother, if you see your brother doing wrong, you can speak the truth in love. I don't mean just bash him inside the head with the Bible. Say, brother, you know what? I know there's a better way. And why don't you try this? You know, can I help you with something? Can I, you know, what, what can I do to help you be better at what you're trying to do? But we, we, we just go and tear into people. And that's why a lot of people don't go to church because uh, y'all might not agree with me, but church folk are the most judgmental people around. We forget where we come from. And we may grow unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ Jesus. That's why we're going there. Where the real Christians at? Well, we still look in church. And I hope I have a lot of real Christians on the Zoom line right now. It said, from whom the whole body. See, when we all work together, guess what? Everything fits jointly. Everything comes together. Oh, What's the old song, the knee bone connected to the leg bone and all? Well, we have all that in the church, and it takes each and every one of us, each and every minister, each and every prayer warrior, each and every technician, each and every singer. All of those things have to come together to make the whole body that we fit together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to what? effectual working in the measures of every part. Every part is important, church. Don't think that just because you're not in the choir, you're not important. Everybody is important. And it make an increase of the body, what? Unto the what? Edifying of itself. In what? In love. In love. Yes. We want to be the real Christians. We want to know where the real Christians are. We need to go back and find love. We, what's that old say? At the cross? Mm -hmm. At the cross where I first saw the light mm -hmm. where the burdens of my heart rolled away. Mm -hmm. It was there. Mm -hmm. By faith, I received my sight. Now, I'm happy all the day because I know that Christ loves me. I know that Jesus is love. And we say it all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's a saint's day. Amen. 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 Amen.